virtual, but I don't know if they'll go be going back next year now to in-person presentations, but for CDBG and SNPMA, these have been in-person prior to the pandemic, and these are required in order for us to obtain funding, so I put uh, budgets in there. If they're virtual, we're good. If not, then we'll make sure that we attend so that we have the opportunity to obtain those funds. Um, the dues and publications is for NNRDA. I put an estimated amount in there. I have not seen anything officially back from NNRDA as to what our dues may be. Would you happen to know about that? You know, they, they have not discussed that. I expect that at this month's meeting. Okay. So, but I will reach out to Sheldon and see if I can come up with that. Get, get a feeling for what, what, what he's planning on presenting. Okay, all right. So I'll just mark that, that and I'll follow up with you then later this month and hopefully we'll have a more accurate figure in there when we hit tentative. And then for contract services, um, this is, uh, uh, if you recall last year, what we did is we contracted someone to assist with the, uh, an engineer to assist with the design of the NNRB, or the SNPMA project for Heritage Park. That was very successful and that worked very well through our SNPMA application. Uh, and so um, I'm just putting that in there because they are telling us that the next round is coming forward. And as we do that, if we do have some applications, we need to look at engineering to assist with getting realistic numbers because they really want to vet those numbers. And we really don't have in-house expertise to provide that for us. Um, so that is there. So if we need to engage an engineer to go ahead and assist with an application, we can do that. And that is about it for economic development. Is there any questions on that? Anyone? There you go. Go ahead. Okay. So the next one is going to be for uh, natural resources. And uh, wages and benefits in this is just for the, uh, the person who does PUAC and uh, the Water Advisory Committee. Uh, minutes and agendas, so they are their administrative assistant basically, and uh, then upgraded for the pact for those boards as well. Um, so, and I don't know if Jeremy was going to be on here, but he yes. said he he would be available. So if I'm Jeremy, you on the phone? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Have you heard? Can, can you hear Elizabeth? <coughs> Absolutely, and Chairman, um, I didn't have a formal presentation, but I am more than happy to answer any questions you may have as our request. Well, let's let Elizabeth move forward with it, and anything you feel like you need to input, go ahead. Okay, so what I have in here is for um, Jeremy's estimate to me, because I did reach out to him and ask him what he thought, and he did think that um, 40000 was a more realistic number for next year and what those services might look like. Um, and I believe that I put his email in the backup. Yes, his email is in the backup that explains about that, so hopefully you've had the opportunity to read that. And he did say he'd be available, which he is today. I also kept in $20,000 under contract services for uh, the ACE water attorney, and that is related to that Pine Valley. Uh, we don't know what's going on there yet. I haven't seen a whole lot of activity, but um, I believe that it's probably good to have that in there because I believe that's what you had committed to earlier in this year uh, to uh, defend water rights in Snake Valley. Um, so the other things that are in there are just dues uh, for the Central Nevada Regional Water Authority and $2,000 for travel to the quarterly meetings for the uh, Central Nevada Regional Water Authority meetings. Just in case. I, yes. I we, we've been, yeah, we've been doing that over the phone or Zoom. And I do believe uh, that uh, the assessor just let me know under water resources planning, part of what we have in there is renewal of some water rights. And I do believe that uh, I just got those numbers from the assessor, so I will have that updated prior to uh, tentative. Are there any questions on natural resources? Any, Jeremy, you got any questions? No, sir, unless 
uh, anyone on the commission has questions of our uh, request or thoughts for next fiscal year, we enjoy working with the county, obviously, and we hope to continue that. Thank you. Anybody on the commission? Hearing none, let's move forward. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Okay. And the last one here is Tri-County Weed. And I don't know if someone from Tri-County Weed is here. Um, uh, I was working with Rope Ashworth on this budget, and he did do the updates to it. Uh, so pretty much um, the revenues, that this is a self-balancing fund, the revenues come from weed spraying and interest and uh, the only thing that's out of there in zero is that residual equity transfer won't happen. And um, then they have not requested an increase in the number of FTEs. And I'm going to look to Shane again. Has this gone before the Tri-County Weed Board, do you know? Or? It has not. We, we will be meeting on the 19th. On 319? Yes. Okay, so I'll follow up after that date to see if there are any amendments before we go into tentative. Um, if the, the board there wants to change anything. Um, and so the, the things that I noticed in here, they do have travel in there. They have lodging in Purdue, and this is largely when they go out and they spray. Because they are can, you, can you take your mask down? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to. Okay, so um, the lodging in per diem in here is largely for they cover a tri-county area, and when they send people out to spray, it does require that they overnight, so that's pretty much what their lodging in per diem is for. Um, and then there are some items for uh, uh, equipment over 5000 that were requested for next year, um, a flatbed trailer, a pickup truck, and a UTV with a spray rig. Um, so total request of $100,000 for equipment over $5,000. Um, I am sure certain that the Tri-County Weed Board will take a look at those, evaluate them, knowing what is going on over there, and if they have differing recommendations, we'll hear about that after the 19th. Yeah, that's all, that's all just going to be based on available funds, and, uh, and won't have any impact back then. Right, and so like this fund, like every other fund, uh, we'll have a central services allocation, which I will determine uh, after we get everything put together, and that's based, again, on the value of equipment, the number of FTEs, and their overall budget as it relates to the overall county. So that's our allocation method on that. So any questions on Tri-County Weed? Anyone? No. Anyone on the phone? Here, seeing none, hearing none, we'll move on. So right now we'll stay uh, new value extension uh, open. Okay. In case you come, and we'll move on uh, to to communities. Is that okay? Yep, that right. works for me. Okay. So I did, as I always do, go out and meet with each one of the community town councils, um, and each one of them have we have discussed what is going on in their in their communities and where they want changes. The first one is the town of Lund in your in your backup materials and. Uh, they are, um, the, their only real big differing request is that they want to go ahead and increase an amount in their miscellaneous account, because that's the account they use for all of their special events, Easter, Christmas, and I believe they want to have additional money available for a contribution towards the fireworks, and I believe that's related to their rodeo there annually. So that, and then the other one that they did is they put in, uh, uh, $12,000 for equipment over 5000 and what they want to do is get those uh, street signs, those flashing street signs that tell people how fast they're going so that they know to slow down and they want to put one of those on each end of town. So they budgeted 6000 for two of those signs um, to try and help because we've heard from them repeatedly that their concern is people go through one too fast and they're hoping that this will be, help bring awareness to that. Um, so those are the only two real changes being requested by Lund. Anyone got any questions on the Lund question, the Lund, the Lund budget? Hearing none, we'll move on. Okay, then for the town of Ruth, um, again, uh, benefits and pay, pay there did get adjusted, but benefits did. Um, and their 
Uh, only uh, really big changes are there. They did try and keep their budget as balanced as possible, but they decreased their amount of uh, seasonal for their parks. Um, and then the other big change is going to be their the what they're trying to watch very carefully is their water, and they did take that number up uh, because of the rate increase with McGill Ruth GID. So. Um, both uh, McGill and Ruth are having issues with watering their parks this year within budget because of those rate increases. So they did account for those into uh, next year's budget. One of the things they're working on on the Ruth Mining Memorial Park is to make that as, as water free as possible through landscaping with different non-watering items. Which Bill's sitting there if you have any questions. <laughs> Are McGill and there Ruth on meters? Are, are they both? How are they built? I mean, I know they have yeah, a big thing. Everything in McGill, in the McGill Ruth, Ruth you know, okay. is on meters. So it could pump up a corner of usage, right? Yes. Okay. Talk yes. In and Thank you. And, and they did do a rate study prior to increasing rates, and they went through a public process on that. So um, if there are no questions on Ruth, then I'll go right into McGill. Uh, and McGill. Their um, changes that are um, big, again, are related to their uh, water. They need to take their water up um, for their parks and also for, um, they want to, as far as capital improvements, they put in $10,000 for a storage shed to be placed behind uh, the Kinnear Library for admin and for the library. And then they uh, have committed the last, this is year three of a three year project to upgrade all of their street lights to LED so that they can save money in the long run. So they budget that, let that last 25,500, which was estimated at the beginning of the project. So they should have that done at the end of next fiscal year. Um, and then, yeah, absolutely. We're trying to do that. If, we got, if we've got those coming to us and they can use them in these different communities, I think that might be a really good uh, usage of that. They're talking about needing one there in the guild for sure when we group. That puts absolutely okay. Make a note of that and then we'll be possible to use those. Okay. Other than that, anybody else got anything on the guild? Hearing none, we'll move on. And we'll still keep Ag Extension open. Is there anybody out there from Ag Extension yet? Hearing none, we'll just go on into the final one, if you will. Revenue, payroll, and balancing. Okay, so, and I would like to go ahead and just say, first of all, general fund revenues, as a reminder, will come in here uh, on March 25th. Um, I wish I could say they would be before your March 24th meeting, but that's not the way that goes. Your payroll estimates are in your backup materials. Uh, they are the um, by position, by department, and by position, and they outline the costs of each position. Um, things highlighted in yellow are new requests. Things highlighted in pink are negotiated items, um, and so that's the color code on that. Um, and I apologize. I did have a request to have the new edition summary here by today. I do not have that ready and available for you. I will have that at your 324 meeting. Uh, based on the outcome of the discussions today. And then that's it, I, unless you want to start the process of balancing. But I don't think necessarily balancing is a good idea until you have the revenue side of the equation, because that's how you balance. Um, and I also wanted to ask you if you wanted to have a discussion on a, the potential for a special meeting, because your March 24th meeting comes up, and you have to go ahead and we'll have this on the agenda if you have any questions, but we won't have the revenues at that time. Then you have your April, your first meeting in April, um, and then on April 15th I have to file the tentative. So I didn't know if you wanted to have a special meeting in between there to have consideration of a balancing process um, before you try and approve the tentative on that, that first meeting in April. I think it would be because of the timing of how we're going to receive our information this year to have that interim meeting, otherwise you're going to be trying to give me changes without seeing the actual outcome of those changes 
in a written format on your first meeting in April so that I can submit the tentative on April 15th. I think historically, we've always, it's been a good idea. We've used